Here we are then, the last 7Ks, we're going into the finish today at Burgos. They've just run under the banner, and it's, uh, an, it's an alliance of the Belgians and the Germans at the front at the moment. Uh, Quickstep and De Vitamon and Rolf Aldag is the uh, team mobile rider, just being constantly pushed on, uh, literally, by Fasa Bortolo, who do not want to come to the front and do the work yet for Alessandro Pataki. They're all sitting there waiting, and I think it was Fabio Baldato who's the first guy in the Fasa line, but as soon as uh, one of the riders at the front uh, dropped off, uh, having done his, his pull, uh, Fabio Baldato would just a little hand on the back of uh, Rolf Aldag or wherever it was and just push them up the front again. They do not want to uh, do any more work than they have to, Sean. No, well, they do not. Uh, we've seen that over a number of days uh, where, you know, they seem to uh, ride um, to, a, to a moment and then they get to, you know, to, uh, distance from the finish and there's other teams who come up to the front of the bunch and start working and they seem to be able to work out that they can leave those riders amazingly, do the front do the front pulling and we see there, you know, the team mobile and quick step doing it now for a little while and they're just waiting there in the shadow and uh, they just appear like a number of kilometres out, four or five kilometres to the finish and the faster riders then just in block they go to the front and they just up the speed and uh, that's you know what Pataki need a lead out like that and if he's taking that position to the last 150 200 meters before the line well then he's impossible to beat well, that's a good view isn't it from up there of the race passes most people who stand on the side of the road see the race uh, caravan coming past and it flashes past especially at 55k an hour which they're traveling out at the moment not bad being up at a crane and watching that well, we are rapidly approaching the last five kilometers of today's run into Burgos. You can see from the back of the motorcycle, it looks like a, uh, a good run in. It looks like a nice uh, tarmac surface, but to be honest, it's not quite as, uh, as smooth as it looks. Being jostled around the cameraman on the back there. Five kilometers to go then, still T-Mobile doing all the work on the front. Where is Eric Zabel hiding? He'll be in there somewhere, and CSC at the front as well, uh, Sean, just keeping Sastra out of trouble, or just trying to tee somebody up for uh, a bit of a go today? Well, I think uh, yeah, the first thing would be maybe to keep uh, Sastra up out of uh, danger, keep him in the, in the top 20, and he's not a rider who you know, would really be... Uh, uh, love this sort of uh, stage finish because you know a lot of movement in the front of the bunch when we get the last number of kilometers and uh, you know a little split in the group and you can lose a number of seconds very quickly so i think uh, it's just for uh, i would say it's for sastra because in the uh, in the csc they don't really have a big sprinter anymore so um uh, i don't see any other reason for them to be up the front yeah giovanni lombardi would have been their big uh would have been a big sprint name in the past, of course, lead-out man for Mario Cipollini, but really has foregone that uh, role for CSC. Mario Lombardi ch fences his chances today. They're certainly driving along on the front. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Li uh, Liquid Gas also coming towards the front. Marco Zanotti, their, their designated sprinter, but they've got a couple of guys who could uh, stick a good sprint in if needed. Even big Magnus Backstead, if he's feeling good after his day off, uh, might give it a go today. Only lost one rider so far, Liquid Gas, Oscar Masson, the Italian. He went uh, ooh, about four or five days ago now. It's all beginning to uh, break up a little bit. The pace being set on the front by a number of teams now, and uh, De Vita Monlotto have got on the front. Once again, trying to set something up for Tom Steeles and Fasa Bortolo going on the what the left-hand side of your screen, that well, the left-hand side of your uh, the road here, right-hand side of the screen, with three kilometres to go. Now they run alongside the river, and it's a 500-meter uh, run-in or just thereabouts to the line, and a nasty little right-hand swing, Sean. Yes, and uh, we see here the speed is not really high because the group is, you know, very much compact. And uh, if it was really going at you know at a higher rate, they would be pulled out much more. And we see, you know, a lot of different riders coming to the front here. As we see some of the Gellersteiners riders, you know, starting to come up here now. But this is the moment where we we'll see, you know, the fast as we see on the left-hand side, they're just starting to take it over now, and they will up the pace. And immediately we will see the bunch will stretch out quite a lot. But uh, again, the fast riders, as we said, they just wait and wait, and three kilometres to go a perfect, you know, position for them because they can really keep the pace very, very high from here right to the finish. No sign of Tom Bonin near the front yet. Uh, no sign of Eric Zabel. 
at the front yet. He will be tucked in there. The Gerolsteiner riders uh, were trying to come alongside Fasser Bortolo with two kilometers to go. Uh, Heinrich Hausler has been the man in form for them. The young German, Australia German, I guess you'd say. He's got uh, Australian parentage as well. Rennie Hasselbacher is their designated sprinter, but hasn't really been on form. Hasn't been firing on all cylinders here. But Fasser Bortolo still leading out the train. And I think, uh, well, let's have a look at it. It's all very, very messy towards the front. Eric Zabel will be right up there. You can see there's a bit of leaning going on it right in the middle. <laughs> I, think, I think that might have been Big Magnus giving somebody a big thump, uh, say, get out the way. There's Tom Bonin, I think, uh, just settling in onto the fourth back at the moment. Uh, Alessandro Pataki is almost right on his shoulder. Uh, then uh, two of the liquid gas riders Backstead and Zanotti probably. Can't see Tom Steele's directly in there. He's got a yellow helmet, remember, uh, on his Davidson Monlotto colours. Under the one kilometre to go banner, and they've set it up perfectly again, Sean, for Alessandro Pataki. Yes, they uh, certainly have. You know, they're in the driving force at the moment. Still a number of the faster riders, but quite a mixture of riders up there front. As you see, Liquid Gas, uh, we see Zabel up there, and also the, some of the quick step riders up there in the top 10 or 15. So quite a mixture of teams all the time. This is this very nasty uh, left-hander. It's a big wide road, but it's look, 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 look. Whoa, I think Eric Zabel has run very wide. I think that might have been Zabel who's gone too wide. Or is he still in there? No, he's still in there. Tom Bonin coming on the far left-hand side. Jimmy Casper, I think it is behind, but Alessandro Pataki's in a perfect lead-out position. There is Eric Zabel right behind him. Marco Velo is the last man on the train, as per usual. You can see the young uh, German Heisler from... Uh, Gelsteiner right on Tom Bonin's wheel. That's a very good place to be. Here goes Pataki. Tom Steele's coming up on the far left-hand side. He's really trying, but he hasn't got the power. Eric Zabel right on the wheel of Pataki. Will he be able to get around him? He won't. No chance at all. And Alessandro Pataki just, just driving his way to the line. And Eric Zabel just had to be content with sitting in the wheel tracks. There's n there was no chance of coming around him, uh, Sean. And again, Tom Steeles went for it fairly early and just faded at the power of the big Italian rider. Yes, well, again, uh, no, Pataki just uh, so impressive when he just takes off from the front. Uh, we see Zabel there in the wheel, and uh, he's just happy to stay in the wheel. And the other riders, you know, uh, nobody really chall challenging at all. Well, let's have a look then at the last kilometre. Here we go, they go under the banner, and Sean uh, already the... Well, in fact, at this point, this is where the Gerolsteiners gave up. Uh, they were trying to take their own lead-out train on the left-hand side of our picture as you look overhead, and they just really gave up because they couldn't match the pace of Fasa Bortolo, and everybody had to try and tuck in behind Alessandro Pataki. Is that the time when they realise that's where they're going to have to be? Yes, well, of course, you know, the Faso riders, uh, they know exactly how to, you know, go about the sprint, and they, they know the running, and uh, they just really turned it up at that time, and the other riders were starting to come up on the uh, on the left-hand side and uh, just up the pace a bit, and everybody just went a little bit further, went back leading really the group from there on. Tom Bonin, a long way back at this point. That's his, I'm sure that's Jimmy Casper, the uh, Cofferdist sprinter in there as well, just on the wheel. Marco Zanotti is the liquid gas rider, I'm sure. Eric Zabel and Tom Steele's coming out from behind uh, Zabel's wheel and trying very hard, but trying by himself again. Maybe should have stayed there a little bit longer, Sean, do you think? Well, I think the best thing for Steele's to do would be just to stay in the wheel because we see w when he moved out and uh, started taking the wind, he just started going backwards and the uh, other Royals started to come by him. He should have just stayed in the slipstream of uh, Zanotti, for example. Like Zabel did, you know, in the wheel of Pataki, just stayed there and finished in second. Uh, it just, you know, proves once again Pataki when it's uh, in just a straight-out sprint, there's nobody able to, you know, uh, give him any challenge at all. And Bonin, surprisingly, he was a long ways off. Yeah. He was in about sixth or seventh position there, not the position to be in at all, and surprisingly, that he's you know not moving further up and trying to get in the wheel of Pataki. That's the only way he can challenge Pataki. But in that position we see here, you know, in about fourth, fifth position, uh, too far off. Well, you can see Tom Steele's on the far right-hand side of the picture. Has decided to go it alone and just fades, just fades. Uh, Eric Zambal's in pretty good shape, though. I mean, he's not losing an awful lot of ground to Alessandro Pataki. In fact, if anything, he's just inching up on him. But. Uh, Yes, still well, not been in the right place at the right time well I think it's uh, the right place we, yes uh, I think it's the right place but uh, when Pataki goes we see that he takes almost two bike lengths from him and Pataki comes uh, uh, Zabel sorry comes back slowly into the wheel but like you know it's too late then and it, there's no way he's going to get by Pataki and it just when Pataki really just goes for a sprint he just pulls out that advantage and then everybody's just fighting to stay in the wheel from that moment on yeah he's got a good kick isn't he as soon as
rubber banks. Uh, just a couple of the rubber banks at the front. We saw Elis Baleares at the front as well. Three or four riders doing some work trying to drag the peloton along. Uh, interesting. Is that because uh, Sevilla's up the road, Sean? Because although he's a fair way back on Mancebo, uh, is Mancebo using the opportunity to put a little bit of pressure on uh, Roberto Heras, who may be injured, but also try and drag back uh, a reasonable, keep a reasonable gap to Sevilla, who he still sees as a potential threat to certainly his position? Yes, well, of course, you cannot uh, allow a, a rider like Sevilla take uh, too much time because then he, you know, leapfrogs up in the general classement. And, of course, uh, we see the Ilis Baleares riders uh, setting the pace there. And that's just to keep it, you know, um, would keep it from growing too much. And uh, for Manchebo, of course, he doesn't want uh, Sevilla to come up close to him or maybe go ahead of him if they, if they manage to, uh, you know, pull out quite a big advantage. Uh, so they're, you know, t they're closing down that, they're riding the front. And uh, that's the reason just to keep uh, Sevilla on the control two riders in the break of course uh, Juan Horach and uh, Pablo Lastras and now they did have three at one time Vincenti Garcia Costa was up there as well but uh, those riders will be contributing nothing at all despite the protestations of Oscar Savilla but uh, he's uh, been around long enough to know that they're not going to do anything that's their job just to sit on his wheel now and see how far Savilla can pull things along so Lastras Horach uh, Oscar Sevilla, Oscar Pereiro, uh, Maurizio Adilia, all on the front, and Samuel Sanchez, the uh, lone rider from uh, Oescatel in the break. He's a good rider, Sanchez. We've been talking about him over the last few days. He had a very good season two seasons ago. Last year wasn't so good. Uh, and what, the, the end of last year wasn't so good. And the beginning of this year wasn't so good. But we've seen him quite active and, and helping out, certainly at the beginning of this world. That, uh, he's uh, he's a rider who can turn in a really good performance on certain days, Sean. Yes, well, I think in this race we've seen him quite a bit in the end uh, of the stages. We've seen him going in the attack, and any time the stages have been a little bit undulating in the final, where there's a bit of a hail, he's uh, went in the attack on a number of times, and that tells you, you know, he's in uh, he's feeling good because to be able to come out of the bunch at that time in the race, you have to be in good shape. And uh, I think you know the day is coming, um, the mountain stages, um, you know, maybe we see him in the break, but certainly today and the finish today, of course, an uphill finish. Uh, it's not a case where you have a flat finish, to, you know, a, a rider who can sprint really well, they have a great chance of pulling it off. So in an uphill one, it's, uh, it's, it's more fair. I think everybody gets a good shot, at, and especially when it's about, you know, two, two and a half kilometers an uphill, I think, uh, uh, you know, a, a chance for more people to pull off the stage today. Yeah, there's a good number of riders who could do that in that group as well. Little Maurizio Adelia, the uh, Colombian rider, really good all-rounder. He's built a bit, a bit like a whippet, but he's, uh, he's a strong young lad was signed for Davide Monlotto at the beginning of the year. Seems to be repaying them quite well. Good rider. Uh, Oscar Pereiro coming back into form a little bit. Uh, finding his legs towards the middle to end of this Vuelta. Had a particularly poor first half of the Vuelta. Involved in a couple of crashes. And in fact had a very, very difficult Tour de France. He worked very, very hard. Uh, did very, very well indeed. And that takes a lot out of you. So uh, Pereiro may be a strong man for today. Adilio, good man. Sanchez, a good man. Pablo Lastras as well as one uh, stages in the Vuelta, both in the high mountains and on this sort of terrain. He's a very good all-rounder, Sean. Yes, uh, yeah, he's a, I think everybody up in this break, you know, it is uh, very difficult to call it who could win the stage if they stay away, and it looks like yes, uh, now uh, they're going to hold on out there because we see once again the bunch all across the road, the speed have dropped quite a bit, and uh, if they keep on working together up front and don't stop uh, you know, playing about and attacking each other, well, then they should hold on and go on to contest, contest this stage victory. What about when they actually get up to the top? Because, uh, as we said, it's a pretty nasty climb. Oh, it's one of the Buig telecoms, Christoph Kern, I think. The uh, Buig rider just shot out of the bunch there. He's going to try and make it across, I would think. Well, he's putting in some effort. There's no doubt about that. What about the top of this finish today, Sean? It's a sharp, nasty little climb, but then it flattens out towards the top. There's this sort of gentle right-hand swing in towards the finish. Uh, are we going to see four maybe two three four men get away and then start playing cat and mouse and be caught again to uh, towards the line by the rest of the breakaway guys 
Well, I think uh, it depends on the, the break up front, how uh, much the advantage uh, they will have going into the bottom of the climb, uh, because uh, if, the, uh, if the bunch reacts and they start coming, you know, closing down on them, uh, well, then they'll have to keep it going up front because, you know, the time advantage is not huge, so they can't have uh, the time to play about that much. And on a short climb like this, I think when you, you know, when we arrive in the bottom of the climb, I think there'll be riders who will go in the attack and, uh, you know, they will be pulled back and another one go on the attack. So I think it'll be actually all the way there won't be any time uh, where they will really you know start playing cat and mouse on this final time well brave move strong uh, riding pushing a big gear christoph kern from week telecom well he's uh, working hard but he looks pretty much done in already sean <laughs> i think he's been uh, it's been a long welter for a lot of people, but riding hard, obviously in the intention to bridge across to the other guys, but I think that's going to be difficult with uh, five or six committed riders up the front to get across there by yourself. Could have done with somebody else coming along with him. No, I don't think it's possible for a rider to bridge this gap, which is, you know, um, around the minute a bit more. And uh, uh, you know, Kelton just goes out of the bunch when it slows down really uh, you know we see everybody yeah. across the road and he just you know see the occasion I suppose to get himself on the, on TV for a moment and uh, you know for him to hold on out there even uh, uh, ahead of the bunch I don't think he will be capable of doing it oh you're such a cynic getting yourself on TV for a while can't blame him though well it looks this is the helicopter shot we're getting down to the breakaway riders and it looks as though it's beginning to split up the pressure coming on in the front can't tell you from it looks like Oscar Pereiro from yeah Pereiro and Sevilla with Ardelia with them and uh, one of the Elis Palias riders I think that is Juan Horach but I'm not sure be nice if we could get down there and have a look but definitely Sevilla Ardelia the uh, Colombian Oscar Pereiro is the Fonac rider and one of the two Elis Palias riders are either Juan Horach or Pablo Lastras looks to be the taller of the two so I would suggest that maybe all right but don't uh, don't take my word for it where are the camera bikes I wonder I wonder what's happened to them I wonder if they wonder if the uh, cameraman's inadvertently fallen off the back trying to film tarmac or sky or armco barrier or something well, the rest of the riders involved in that little breakaway really trying to get to uh, it all back together. It's certainly not flat on this run up to the finish today. And the pressure really coming on hard from Oscar Pereira at the front. Uh, this is the back of is this, uh, a group going across to Christoph Kern. It is. One CSC rider, there's uh, Ojaque Rodriguez at the back there, you can see. And uh, Christoph Kern not staying out there for too long. Andrea Perron, I think, was the rider from uh, CSC trying to get across to the front, or has got across to Christophe Kern. And Alberto Ongarato from Fasso Bortolo, I think, was the guy with his shirt flapping around. It's pretty hot again today. It's not as hot as it has been in the first week of the Vuelta, but this is uh, an interesting finish now. Groups coming out from the main peloton. And up at the front, the group of eight riders now splitting up quite uh, definitively it looks like Oscar Pereira again putting the pressure on from this helicopter shot I'd love to tell you why we haven't got a motorcycle shot but I can't Ardelia on his wheel they've just slowed it down again Sean uh, all beginning to look over their shoulders already Pereira not willing to take up all the work on the front Sean no, certainly not. And uh, we see the the five leaders there. Uh, you know, they're just going uh, uh, sudden acceleration. Somebody tries to attack off the front, and then uh, everybody comes back in his wheel, and they slow down again. As we see it once again here, uh, we see it uh, looks like the Fornak rider there in the front, and uh, you know, being chased by one of the Elis Baleares riders. And uh, uh, you know, it's going to be like that, I think, all the way to the finish, because uh, this one quite a sharp one. They're going just to battle all the way over the, the last number of kilometres here. Well, Pereiro showed such a strong ride in the Tour de France. He doesn't want to have to do all the work at the front, but he's having to do all the work at the front at the moment because nobody's got to help him. 
he kept looking behind he kept slowing down saying somebody else come and do some work with me i'm not going to do it all and he's decided well they're not going to play ball if i want to win this one today it's a it's a nasty nasty climb up it's only third category Nadia coming back into his wheel and as we see the time gap back to the main uh, the front half of the bunch uh, a minute so uh, definitely I want to you know stay out here and the big three you want to be between uh, you know those riders up front we see we have five here but uh, the other riders I reckon uh, who are in this uh, group with, uh, with the rest I think uh, they're not too far off either Good riding by little uh, Maurizio Ardelia the Colombian he's uh, latched onto the wheel of Oscar Pereira he saw that Pereira was going to ride away by himself and he's uh, sprinted across the gap. He's a, a very talented all-rounder, very talented indeed. And now he and Pereira are taking up station at the front of this little breakaway group. Down the road are the two Ilis Baleaz riders, Lastras and Horac. Uh, and then uh, David Latassa was in there. He's been distanced now. Samuel Sanchez from Oescatel is in there. So two of the men that we were talking about, Sean, that could, well, you're saying anybody could contest this one. Well, Adelia, who's been riding very well in the last couple of days. Pereiro coming back into a bit more form. These two up the front by themselves. It's going to take, uh, it's flattened out a little bit now. It's going to take some real effort to get back to these two. Now they're riding well. Yes, uh, they are. Well, Pereira is the one who is doing uh, all the riding. We see Aldea here. He's not uh, uh, taking all the pace, setting the pulling on the front at all. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if Pereira, you know, doesn't keep working at 100%, well, then uh, other riders will come back. As we see, there, there, are, there are a number of riders coming back, and uh, there's a rider there at about 50, 60 metres behind those two leaders. Canny riding by Aldea. He knows that Pereira is a strong guy. Well, Pereira, to be fair, he made the... Uh he made the decision to go for it by himself. Uh, Ardelia's come up to him. I think he had a quick word with him when he came up. Ardelia probably not uh, wanting to contribute at all, forcing Pereiro to do the work. He's come to the front now and really uh, put a little bit of pressure on as well. And Pereiro looks like he's beginning to suffer a little bit in the wheel of Ardelia. Is Ardelia going to wait for him? I don't think he is. Oh, he is. He's just slowing down again. Oh, it really is uh, quite... Uh, Quite an interesting one with these two. Pereira, I don't think he's going to want to hang around, Sean. He's going to have to do what he wants. And Samuel Sanchez uh, has bridged over the gap. He's almost coming up on them. Ardelia got to the front uh, and then decided he wanted Pereira to do the, the run out today, Sean. He's the strong man and it's all slowing down. Maybe there is going to be a bit of cat and mouse today and Sanchez is going to catch them at this rate. Yes, well, of course, so we see Ardelia. He's not riding at all. When he went to the front, he attacked Pereira. And then when Pereira uh, came back on his wheel again, he just, you know, sat up and uh, still sitting in the wheel of Pereira as we see Sanchez coming back to join him. Uh, so with uh, three up front at the moment and uh, 500 metres. So uh, it's going to be between those three riders, looks like, in the finish. Although we can see a number of riders uh, just uh, a number of metres behind those three leaders. Well, in a flat out sprint I'd favour Ardelia in this uh, circumstance. Pereira is very strong but Ardelia has got more zip. He's uh, in the wheel of Pereira. He's still got about uh, 300 metres to go. Sanchez just lurking there. Certainly not a sprinter. Well, he's gone from a long way out as uh, Ardelia. He's gone to the front from a long, long way. He's got about 200 metres or so to go. Ardelia uh, still on the front. And it's Oscar Sevilla who's coming back at them. Ardelia Oh, he's missed the line. Ardelius thought he's finished. He's got the wrong banner. And Ardelius sat up, thought he'd won, and he's got in the wrong position. Samuel Sanchez has taken advantage. Pereira also got a bit hoodwinked by that. I don't believe it. Samuel Sanchez comes from behind with Maurizio Ardelia convinced he'd won, and Pereira just being caught by the fact that Ardelia had thrown his hands up in the air, thinking he'd won. He lost it. He threw it away because he got the wrong banner. They were still 150 metres from the end. Well, I never. Juan Horac coming over the line now. Uh, Pablo Lastras is the rider behind. He blew apart on the last climb, which is a nasty little third category dig. Maurizio Ardelia went with about 350 metres to go and then suddenly threw his arms up in the air thinking he'd won the stage. Yes, and there is a banner there, as you can see, just uh, before they come to that little final car. There's a banner just overhead, and he just got it wrong with that. And uh, we could see there was no line there, but he put his hands up. He thought that was the exact finish. Oh, dear. Well, what can you say? I mean, there's a banner there, but come on. The commentary boxes aren't there. The crowd isn't there. The line isn't on the road there. It doesn't say finish. It's not as if he's got an excuse. He's, he speaks Spanish, for goodness sake. He's a Colombian. 
Yes, but speaking Spanish doesn't help no, in that situation. Yeah, but, yeah, but you've got it written over the top, sure, sure. Well, if you're on the limit there on the climb, of course, uh, and we yes. see that they were really attacking each other and they really went from the last uh, two or three kilometres, and you see the banner overhead, and sometimes you can get it wrong. It's not the first time we have seen riders, and he definitely he, he got it totally wrong. But surprising that he did not see that the line, normally when you're sprinting, uh, you would just see the line in front of you, but he definitely you know, got it all wrong because he, he was sure that he had taken the stage victory. Absolutely, and it caught Pereiro out as well, didn't he? Because Ardelia threw his hands up in the air. Pereiro, I suppose it's the instinctive reaction, isn't it? You stop, you, you stop uh, sprinting. You, your pressure comes off your pedals because you think that's it. But Samuel Sanchez, just behind the two of them, had the presence of mind. Maybe he just had that extra two meters behind them. And could see that it wasn't the finish line and just put his head down and still went. Pereiro given up by this point, thinking, oh, what a waste. Ardelia had given up, and Sanchez just rides away to victory today on stage 13. Well, not the way I'd have thought uh, Samuel Sanchez to have won, but uh, nevertheless, a good victory for him. It's been a long time coming for Sanchez. And the Basque team will be very pleased indeed. Uh, victories in the last week for Roberto Laiseca and for Samuel Sanchez. Well, uh, I don't think that was Danielson coming. It might have been. The group's starting to just filter over the line now. Still, Eladio Jimenez, he's really spinning those pedals around. Right at the top left-hand side of your picture. Then uh, Carlos Sastri is the next camera we have. As the uh, gradient flattens out a bit, he's trying to pile on a bit more pressure. Bottom left-hand side, you can see Scar Scarponi just sitting in there, doing the pace work. Menchov is right on the wheel. All the other big climbers are in there as well, except for Francisco Mancebo, who is suffering today. Now, interestingly, talking to the uh, Liberty Seguros boys before this stage today. Roberto was telling us that it isn't actually Sastra or Menchov or Casilla Gasada or anybody else that he fears. It's actually Mancebo he fears on this climb. So that's good news for him. Eleven seconds of a gap. It's not very much, Sean. He needs to do a little bit more than that if he uh, wants to make an impression today. He's got just over a minute and a minute and six seconds back to, uh, well, from him, from Heas to Sastre. Joaquin Rodriguez done his job for the day, and Sastre still plowing on past him. He's got to get a lot more of an advantage than uh, eleven or twelve seconds, Sean. Yes, well, of course, uh, you know, he has to uh, just keep working on it uh, quite uh, strongly now, and uh, it's a long way to the top, so you have to calculate your effort as well. You just cannot, you know, pull a big advantage out uh, very, very quickly and then not being able to hold it. So Sastra, of course, he will have the experience, you know, from, you know, doing a lot of big tours uh, just to get out there and keep working and pull away slowly, and uh, uh, as they're so far to go, we see that they just went through the nine-kilometre mark uh, for uh, Eladio uh, Jimenez and uh, you know so it's a long ways and a lot of hard of uh, hard part of his claim to come yet. Well, he's now beginning to pick up some of the remnants of the escape group. Bart Dox is being passed now. Bram the Groot. Two of the Lowlands riders who or Dox can climb. 
Grand de Groot could climb as well, but uh, not in the same class. Looking fairly strong is Carlos Sastri, but even if he's measuring his uh, attempt up the road, Eladio Jimenez uh, doing a lot of work on the front. Interesting that uh, Inyo Cuesta is not really losing track with him at all. I don't think there's much of an attack coming here at the moment, is there, Sean? They're just being paced because all the major climbers are in here and nobody seems to be under any particular pressure at the moment. We've seen Oscar Sevilla hasn't had uh, a particularly good climbing time. He'd be trailed off, one of the first people to be trailed off. We've still got uh, Per de Guero in here, who's a good climber, but not a super climber. And we've got Gil Gilberto Simoni in here as well. It's the first time we've actually seen him. So uh, not necessarily a super fast pace yet and still ripe to be blown to bits. Yes, well, I think uh, it's caused a lot of damage at this pace because we see here there's only about uh, maybe 10 riders in this group and uh, uh, when you see the like of Manchebo losing contact, although sometimes in the beginning of the climb he seemed to lose it a bit to get into the rhythm and then he comes back uh, later on and he's the one that, you know, keeps working very uh, hard, fights, uh, fights all the time and he has that style like with, you know, the, the bit of a twist on the bike and just, you know, uh, keep, keep on at it and... Uh, I'd not be surprised if he, you know, could pull back some of the ground that he's lost. But you know, we see there, there's, a, you know, that top group. There's some good names missing from it, and uh, I think the bottom part of this climb they hit it very, very hard. We see the Liberty Securities uh, team uh, riders, you know, charging into it uh, very, very strongly. I think it put a lot of riders under under pressure. Ruben Plaza getting across to the lead group now. Plaza seventh this morning, six minutes down. He's having a good race. Well, you could physically uh, understand the gap between the lead rider, Lidio Jimenez, and uh, Carlos Sastri now. He's just passing that corner where we saw Cuesta and uh, Jimenez. About a minute or so ago, that's the rough time gap. Under the nine-kilometer banner to go then for the main uh, group of protagonists here. And uh, Ruben Plaza riding up to this group. Oh, that's Mansebo on a bad day today. And we haven't seen him in our shots at all until since he lost contact with the Heras Sevilla Menchov uh, group. 8k to go for Eladio Jimenez. Uh, some consolation for him today. If he can get up to the top first, there's 30 points in the bag. It keeps his fight for the Mountains classification jersey alive. Differ it's interesting, isn't it, the different techniques they're employing, Sean. Joaquin Rodriguez uh, taking as many points as he can early in the day. Eladio Jimenez thinking, well, I can get one big lot all at once. We're getting news man Manche, but 13 seconds behind Harris. So he's, uh, you know, he's uh, still working on quite well because he hasn't uh, actually blown because uh, if he had, well, then he would be losing much more time than that. So 13 seconds, you know, he could uh, he, he could rally around and we've seen him do it before to come back, as I said. So uh, we just have to wait and see as we see Sastra here, you know, he's uh, uh, working at it quite well and, uh, you know, going through everybody that uh, that original break where he's just going by them very, very quickly and nobody even had to latch onto his wheel. Yeah, that was... Uh Pena from West Casale just gone past. He's now coming up to Anthony Chateau of uh, Bouygues Telecom. There's a little injection of pace just now. Oh, Roberto Liseca has come across to the group as well. Well, I would suspect, Sean, I know he had a decent pace, but I would suspect then that uh, Heras is just sitting there for the moment or somebody else. They're not really giving it full bore because there are riders coming up from behind working their way back up here. And it's not the uh, nicest of gradients to do that on. So maybe still some to come from uh, the Liberty Man. Yes, well, I think, uh, you know, if Lysek, of course, we see him the other day. He finished very strong on that climb, and I think he's, uh, you know, in quite good shape and uh, not the best of riders to position himself in the bottom of the climb either. And maybe that was the, the problem that he was a little bit far off, and you know, gaps appeared, and he just found himself a little bit further back and trying to come back up now. Although he's, you know, struggling quite a bit. But we did see on the uh, earlier shots there there was other riders, Mescatel. I think there was two of them already up there. So yeah. uh, quite, a, you know, quite a performance by uh, by that team if they have three up in this leading group. Well, very it's close. Yeah, it's been blown apart, though. Uh, Scarponi's gone off the front, and the pace has been injected because the two riders who've just got up to the back, Ruben Plaza and uh, Roberto Liseca, are having real trouble hanging on now. Still, Carlos Sastre going past. That's Martin Elmiger, the Swiss champion. He's just going past. Well, Elmiger is going to have a go at... Uh, hanging onto his wheel on this flatter section of the course. Let's just have a look at the climb today. It's a very, very difficult one. 
almost become legendary. In fact, one of our colleagues, uh, Danny Nellison, rode this way back in the uh, late 1990s, and he was talking to me saying that uh, it's at some points it's so difficult. He rode it in two gears, 23 and 25 on the back sprocket, but it's so steep in some places when you hang onto the top of the bars you literally pull the front wheel off the ground it goes so light and you move your you're moving your position on the saddle so much you have to be very very careful it's enormously steep at some point Oscar Sevilla on the back of this group the pace has definitely gone up a little Scarponi off the back. Uh, good to see Simone in there, Sean. We haven't seen him do anything so far in this welter. No, certainly not. Uh, he's been very quiet and hasn't uh, showed himself at all. And uh, to see him coming up here today, it uh, tells us that he's coming back into shape. And uh, I think, uh, you know, he's a rider that's on the stage like today. If he's really uh, going well, he could be a dangerous one. This is the steepest part of the uh, Covadonga today. La Rousseira just under 14%. This is the bit that Danny Nellison was talking to me about, saying if you don't hang on to your, on the hoods of your bars, you put your hands in the center of the bars, you can pull the front wheel off the ground. If you're that sort of rider, I think all of these are a little bit uh, too much of pure climbers to do that. Eladio Jimenez going for the big one today the stage win and 30 points in the bag which would take him much much closer to Joaquin Rodriguez in the mountains classification but behind him this man Carlos Sastro riding better again towards the end of the Vuelta Sean as he did last year uh, he's coming up behind he's coming up behind Eladio Jimenez this man riding himself in form he's already ridden one big tour this year and he did the same, exactly the same last year. Rode much stronger in the second half of the uh, Vuelta. Well, they've picked up uh, Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano as Roberto Jerez. This will be a last flourish for Gonzalez de Galdiano in this year's Vuelta. Today and tomorrow, maybe. He is retiring. Doing a fine job in pacing uh, this man, Roberto Jerez. Will his knee hold out, Sean, do you think? Doesn't seem to be bothering him too much at the moment. No, certainly not, and uh, I think uh, the position now is uh, perfect for Harris because uh, with Sastre up there, uh, it's a bit of a carrot out there in front from to try and get across. And of course, Sastre, you know, one of the danger may not uh, an immediate danger for the moment, and uh, but uh, it helps that somebody up there in the general classment will, you know, make him go that bit uh, harder to get across to him. And as we see here, you know, when he turns it on, Harris, he has, you know. Uh, Still quite a lot of uh, strength here left, so uh, I think, uh, you know, but um, we see Menchov following quite well, and uh, Simone there in the wheel also, so uh, interesting to see him there to follow that acceleration by Harris. Just the three of them then together now. Yeah, nice to see Gilberto Simone looking fairly calm at the moment. Fantastic Asturian support for Hilario Jimenez. Carlos Sastre now behind, working so hard to try and take back time on Roberto Heras. He was one minute and ten seconds down on Heras this morning. 1.57 uh, back on uh, Dennis Menchoff. He needs to launch a huge attack uh, towards the top if he's going to take too much back. I don't think he's going to take uh, enough back to re really worry. Really worry, Roberto Heras says we we're just coming over race radio now. One minute and 14 seconds down from Eladio Jimenez to Carlos Sastri. Gilberto Simone may be struggling a little bit to hang on. Nice multicolored calendar. We like that. Well, he's got back up to the wheel of Menchov again. Heras looks like he's uh, working very hard, though, Sean. I wonder if he's beginning to suffer. Well, I think he's, cert he's certainly suffering. It. Everybody is probably suffering on this one. You know, it's uh, as you said, it's such a steep one, and uh, uh, but it's just who've got a little bit extra, you know, to uh, to make the difference. And we see Simone there. Uh, he just, you know. Uh, crawled his way back into the wheel of Menchov but loses it once again and when Heras you know just puts on that little bit of pressure he's uh, not able to follow it and maybe he's also calculating uh, Simone because you know an experience would come into it here not try and follow the accelerations by Heras and just you know keep your own pace keep just on the limit but not go over trying to follow Heras's acceleration it's interesting to see Heras though he's sitting in that saddle isn't he 
Uh, he's sitting in that saddle that beforehand we'd have seen him in other climbs, getting up on the pedals, just dancing his way up a little bit of Menchov, just sitting static. But I think his knees playing him havoc today. He's having to sit in the saddle, unlike his normal riding style. It's ever so steep, this climb. Uh, uh, you've ridden this climb, haven't you, Sean? Yes, uh, I have ridden it. I think it was an 87 uh, was uh, the last uh, time I rode it. And uh, it is one of the major climbs in the Tour of Spain. Very, very steep. And actually, I did it uh, some years before that as well. And the surface was much more uh, rougher surface. And they, you know, they, uh, they covered all the surface. They put a tarmac academy on it. And it, was, it made it that much uh, easier. Before that, it was unbelievable because the surface was very, very bumpy. But yes, yeah, one of the most difficult climbs in the Tour of Spain, if not the diff most difficult difficult one because the distance of course as well is you know it's, it's, it's a long climb when it's it's almost 14 kilometers from the bottom uh, uh, it's uh, you know a major one Roberto Heras has been saying for weeks upon weeks upon weeks that this is the most difficult stage for him or whoever wants to win the uh, Vuelta España Velagos do Covadonga today is the queen stage of this year's Vuelta it really is the big one and Heras wanted to do some real attacking here. Whoever wanted to win will have to win, hit, win it on this. Well, maybe he might not win the Vuelta on this stage. It doesn't look like he's losing it at the moment either, Sean. He's still hanging in there, despite his uh, cut and stitched knee. And uh, Dennis Menshoff and he are, as they have been all the way through this Vuelta so far, locked together, wheel on wheel. Menshoff still following do you think he'll launch a little bit of a, a dig towards the top of this Sean uh, do you think he has the strength to go past somebody like Roberto Heras is he weighing it up and seeing that he's a little bit more uncomfortable on the saddle than he expected to be well I think yes uh, Menchov will be really you know uh, taking a uh, big interest in Harris because of this uh, problem he has with his knee and uh, if he feels that Harris is you know suffering a bit and Menchov is on a really good day well then I would not be surprised if he's trying you know have a go at him but I'd be surprised uh, to see Menchov be able to do that because he's you know uh, uh, he's a follower really and it wouldn't be you know a, gr a great uh, a great of climbers against Harris for example and even Harris a little bit you know injured and a little bit of a handicap because of his knee I think he will still cause these riders problems to stay in this wheel and uh, Menchov I think will be happy if he can stay with him today great ride by this man Elidio Jimenez uh, he's gone away from the escape room he's been out all day he has got a major advantage at 1 minute and 12 seconds over the pursuing Carlos Sastre in your Cuesta is sandwiched between the two of them and I think uh, Carlos Sastre is probably going to catch uh, Cuesta by the top Put yourself in Dennis Menshoff, Menshoff's shoes or in Dennis Menshoff's saddle here, Sean. What would you be doing at this point if you were in this exact situation? Well, first of all, the plan would be to stay with Harris and see what way he, you know, he goes on the climb. And of course, there are quite a long ways out yet. And we see Harris on the first mountain top finish. Like he started making the uh, tempo on the front, and then in the end, he just uh, a number of you know sudden accelerations and uh, put Menchov uh, in problems just about a kilometre, a kilometre and a half. And uh, that's what uh, Harris is exactly trying to do here. He's just going to keep on making a very strong tempo, and then uh, we'll try and you know uh, accelerate a bit and try and blow Menchov off his wheel. But uh, if uh, Menchov is really in a good day and he feels Harris is not really up to it, well then uh, he might have a go himself. Uh, you just never know what way he's feeling. And Menchov seems to be getting better as the race goes on. Slowly but surely, I think, Sean, the gap that uh, Sastre has managed to eke out is being taken back again by uh, those three, Menchov, Heras and uh, Gilberto Simoni. Great ride by Simoni. It's really nice to see him up there for a change. Uh, we haven't seen him at all in this year's Vuelta. He's kept very, very quiet indeed. Quiet in the press, quiet in his riding. And... Uh, a man who's been on the podium so many times in the Giro d'Italia and a multiple winner of that Grand Tour. Now making himself a little bit of a name in this year's Vuelta on the wheel of Denis Menchov. There it is. Roberto Heras is looking across the valley. He will be able to see Carlos Sastre up ahead. That knee doesn't seem to be affecting his tempo at all, Sean. I, he's not uh, given it a huge attack yet, but uh, great news for Heras that his knee is holding out. Yes, it certainly seems to be uh, 
seems to be okay for the moment and uh, Harris is doing a very good job here uh, and uh, you know still five kilometers to go so uh, quite a lot of uh, hard road to be climbed before they get to the finish and a lot of time for you know Harris to do uh, uh, the damage if he's really got it and if he can you know put in these sudden attacks well then uh, you know it will cause uh, certainly Simone and maybe Menchoff uh, problems to follow in his uh, in his wheel. Just coming over race radio uh Francisco Mansebo now 50 seconds down on this group here and sh well <laughs> I don't think that's much of a surprise is it Gilberto Simone sitting in there and is now giving it an attack good on him that's what I say and an, a great little attack a little dig coming out Heras and uh, he knows Heras and Menchoff are more interested in each other than in Gilberto Simone he's way down on overall classification he's now going to go charging up the road to go for a place can't try and catch Sastre it's the two behind we've got to watch, but Mansebo only 50 seconds down. He never gives up, does he? No, certainly not. Well, uh, this is the day when he has to, you know, really uh, uh, fight all the way and uh, limit his losses because uh, if, you know, if he really uh, lose qu quite a bit of time today, well, then it's going to be, you know, difficult for him to get a place on the podium. And of course, if he stay, you know, in there, with, you know, uh, with a handful of seconds. Uh, in the in the top three well then he could you know take a place on the podium but uh, surprising to see uh simone going in the attack there and um because he knows that you know he's quite a bit down i presume you know there's uh, a minute and 40 was back to sastra and they are just about 10 or 12 seconds further back again um and here uh, surprisingly that he did not go with uh, simone because that would be the thing to do uh, to follow simone immediately and see would mention of crack and have difficulty following no threat in the uh, overall. This is the gap back from Eladio Jimenez to Carlos Sastre. 151. Picking up riders as they go up. And Roberto Heras and Dennis Menchoff passing by uh, Unai Ulsa. They're not that far down on Carlos Sastre and. Uh, I wonder if Gilberto Simone has caught to Sastre yet. Three to go for Eladio Jimenez. Well, he's had two wins this year already for uh, Comunicat Valenciana. Both Basque races. And the Uscala Bicicleta, which is the sort of tour of the, well, not the tour of the Basque country, but it's a, a local Basque race. Won a, won a stage uh, there and also won the overall as well. So. He's had a good season. The man from Salamanca. Uh, real pressure coming on from uh, Roberto Heras. Sean, this is the first time we've seen Dennis Menchov out the saddle trying to stay with him. He's just keeping his pace at the same. It's obviously the pressure coming on from uh, Heras now. Yes, well, certainly Harris is really turning it on here. We can see he was out of the saddle there, giving it, you know, uh, a lot of effort. And uh, Menchoff, of course, you know, uh, doing the same. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Menchoff has really, uh, you know, covered it well here. He's staying the wheel of Harris and he's never, you know, allowed him to take any bit of distance at all. And that tells you that he must be quite comfortable because if he was really on the limit, there'd be times when he would attack that you would see a bike length or two appearing between himself and Harris. But uh, Jimenez, uh, he's, you know, uh, climbed this... Uh, last climb unbelievably well because Sasser they're chasing giving it everything you know and he's still holding off that 149 150 uh, so a great ride by him up front fantastic ride by Eladio Jimenez great ride all the way through this uh, Vuelta by uh, Dennis Menchoff the Rabobank rider in the leader's jersey there great uh, courage and uh, conviction by Roberto Heras refusing to be bowed by his injuries as some other sportsmen might be in other sports I have to say 15 stitches in that knee and he's still plowing on turning on the pressure to try and shake um, Dennis Menchoff but he's not managing to do so Menchoff responding to everything and they're going to catch up to Gilberto Simone again I think soon still up the road Carlos Sastre who launched the attack at the foot of today's climb of the Covadonga here in the Asturian Hills we're in the Picos Europa it's absolutely beautiful here just a couple of spots of rain of course, when the uh, Vuelta was back in the spring, Sean, if you'd have come to this uh, place back in late April, early May, it could have been extremely cold and lashing with rain. It could have been a much, much different story.
Yes, well, certainly if you get uh, the bad weather conditions and it's raining, well, then it gets quite cold up here at this time of year. You know, the uh, uh, the temperatures are still quite high, although today and the last days we see here, the you know, it's cooled down a lot. So it's probably the best conditions for the riders. A lot of riders, you know, would uh, like this uh, cooler conditions today because if it was a really scorching uh, a day here, it makes that much more difficult again. And the welts changed to a September date uh, back in the mid 1990s just listen to these crowds there may not be many of them but my goodness they're vocal Eladio Jimenez climbing so well today he's hung onto the coattails of Joaquin Rodriguez all day picked up points in the mountains classification as they went along picked up points in the first three climbs of the day This is what this man is after, the glory of a stage win and extra points in the mountains competition. He had a couple of bad days where he lost out to Joaquin Rodriguez of Sonia Deval. Rodriguez took 30 points this morning in the first three climbs of the day, but it was uh, Jimenez who was right behind him in three of the climbs, three out of four in fact, we've had today. This is the fifth climb of the day, Gilberto Simone catching onto the wheel of Carlos Sastre. Sastre beginning to really suffer now. Well, I take it back about him riding stronger maybe he's not quite got there yet Simone on the back wheel it won't be too long before you see the other two look they're right behind him and I think they're gonna make it back up to them pretty quickly that'll be a, a morale blow for Carlos Sastre well it depends on Harris if he has uh, you know anything left in the tank uh, this is the moment uh, where he's going to try and do something and uh, if he does go in the attack uh, well then he could uh, possibly catch those but Sastre is still going quite well and uh, Simone is you know uh, coming uh, coming very strong up the climb we see him the early party seem to you know allow a gap to appear between himself and uh, Harris and Menchoff but I think that was you know all uh, that was a tactic he was working and not trying to follow the sudden acceleration by Harris because he's you know in very good shape here able to come across to Sasser that tells you like he's still got very uh, very good legs and a lot of strength left very good legs indeed he looks very calm and collected one kilometer to go then for this man Eladio Jimenez born in Salamanca he's a tall rangy rider for uh, a climber won two races already this year for UCI points the Oscar Bicicleta won the overall and a stage back in June as he was coming into form He's ridden an awful lot of races uh, in Spain this year. Castilla Leon, uh, Vuelta a Catalunya, and the Vuelta a Asturias. He knows all about these climbs. Here he comes, Eladio Jimenez, the man who wants to take back points on the mountains classification, and he gets a double whammy today. A wonderful ride by this man. He's going to take a solo victory up to the probably the most difficult climb of this year's Vuelta. He went right at the bottom and shook off Ineo Cuesta, who persisted with him for about seven or eight kilometers. Eladio Jimenez of Comunicat Valenciana is going to take victory today. He knows it. He's happy. Started his career way back uh, in 1998 with Banesto. This rider has come to... Uh, Coming to Valencia in the last couple of years <laughs> and salutes the top of La Covadonga. What a great victory today for this man, Sean. He's done himself a power of good in the mountains competition as well as a stage victory on the Queen stage today. Yes, well, of course, the stage today, you know, the, uh, one of the biggest stages, the most important stages in this felt, and to win it uh, the way he went out and done it, uh, it looked like that, you know, everybody was going to be pulled back at that big break, but he just, you know, went off on the bottom slope of the climb and you know rode a magnificent climb because we see with Sastra when he attacked also at around the same place as Jimenez did and just wasn't able to take anything worth talking about him and uh, maybe you know a handful of seconds he took back so uh, a magnificent ride by him and a magnificent ride by this man as well in your cuesta he's been out all day in the break couldn't hang on to the jersey of uh, the winner today but still coming in with a very, very creditable second place. Just about a minute behind from Eladio Jimenez to Inyo Cuesta. So a Spanish 1-2 today at the top of La Covadonga. Will it be a Spanish 1-2-3? Well, who knows? Gilberto Simone looking in slightly better shape, I think, to me than uh, Carlos Sastre at this point. And uh, look at this, Roberto Heras and Denis Menchov together. 
trying to come in behind Simone and Sastre. They almost went under the 1K banner together. Who's it going to be? It's Simone. He's going to upset the Spanish party. Third for the Italian. Then Carlos Sastre coming in, still limiting their losses. It's going to be uh, Dennis Menchoff coming over in uh, fifth with Roberto Heras right on his wheel. Great climbing today by those two. Great stage by Roberto Heras, the injured man of the peloton. Sastre, I think, would have helped, hoped for a little bit more than that, Sean. Yes, I think, uh, you know, he was hoping to... Uh catch up all the, the breakaway riders and you know the stage victory would have been an important one for him and also maybe to pull a bit more time out but uh, you know he's still uh, putting a great ride there and uh, to uh, climb that all on his own uh, ahead of Harris because they were not hanging about oh, a tired Santi Gonzalez today shaking his head as he goes over the line Pedro Guerrero was his teammate just ahead battling it out with Oscar Saviglia coming over for Six, seven, and eight. This is a man we really want to see the time gap, though. About a one minute and uh, 15 second gap between uh, Roberto Heras and himself. Born Iosa. Over the top. Aito Osa, by the way, did have a broken collarbone when he went down. Brother. Uh, Unai finishing. Look at the view across the Asturian hills into the uh, Picos Europa. That's absolutely wonderful view Peña coming over the top for uh, Rescatel and Francisco uh, Mancebo losing time today Roberto Lysecker winner the other day on the last big mountain stage coming over just a shade under three and a half minutes down on the winner today Eladio Jimenez Ruben Plaza coming over as well. Plaza looks absolutely done in Sean. He's really, really tried his heart out today, hasn't he? Yes, well, everybody here, I think, you know, uh, is uh, really going to anybody, I think, in the top, you know, 30 riders are really going to give it everything here. And, of course, you know, this finish here, it's, you know, we can't really get a picture, but it's very, very steep, that, that final ramp. Danielson coming over just in front of Oscar Pereiro, some three minutes and 50 seconds back. Uh, still riding a very good race. 